So what we have here is my old frequency counter. It's counting to 800 at the moment. And um, the purpose of this is I'm trying to generate an 800 kilohertz stable oscillator. Um, so what I have here is a CD4046, uh, which is a CMOS um, uh, PLL phase locked loop um, integrated circuit. And this has a built in voltage controlled oscillator. So to control it, basically, um, you have to, the timing capacitor and timing resistor, <coughs> which you can see here, is doing all of the timing for us. And then you apply a certain voltage and it oscillates at a specific uh, frequency. So um, basically, um, it's a plug and play and it's a 50% duty cycle kind of device. Um, but the way it works is um, pin one is tied to power, uh, pin, uh, I'm sorry, pin 16 is tied to uh, VCC, pin eight is tied to ground. There is a 100 picofarad capacitor between pins um, six and seven. And there is a, um, a 2.47, uh, K resistor tied between pin nine and uh, um, pin 11 and ground. Pin 12 is left floating. Um, the uh, input to the VCO, the voltage controlled oscillator, this is the white wire, which is coming from that potentiometer. Um, that uh, is basically wired as a voltage divider. It's a one K potentiometer. And what it does is basically it varies the voltage uh, going into the input. And um, the output is a, um, the output is this blue wire pin uh, four, and it's going to, it's connecting to that breadboard, that LED light right there basically just tells me that it's on, it's oscillating at the frequency that I have it set to. And then it connects through the red wire into a series of cascaded CD4017 counters. And at the 1000 position, the counters are set to reset through that yellow wire. And then the black wire is being fed into, so it's basically a divide by 1000 circuit. And so um, if I'm looking for a 800 kilohertz signal, which is what I'm trying to accomplish here, um, by going, uh, by dividing by 1000, your expected number should be 800. Um, and uh, it's pretty darn close, um, you know, with the slight variations in uh, the voltage, uh, the, the voltage applied to the input, um, through this potentiometer, which is very fine to adjust, but I suspect that um, um, once I take it off the breadboard, it's going to be much easier. Um, and so we have an 800 kilohertz signal. The ultimate goal of this is to be able to control in a analog sans microcontroller way. Um, the clocking of these NeoPixels, which is a CD4, uh, I'm sorry, a WS2812 uh, NeoPixels, which normally require, you know, Raspberry Pi. I have videos in the past of how I made uh, audio responsive um, RGB LED strip uh, with this. However, um, if I could take the microcontroller out of the equation and do this all through, um, uh, an 800 kilohertz clock, um, the timing for those WS2812 LEDs is that every signal has to be, um, has to last exactly 1.25 microseconds, which if you divide, um, if you do the reciprocal of 800 kilohertz, it's 1.25 microseconds. So that is the need for the, uh, this clock to be, um, as close to 800 kilohertz as possible. So using 
a simple uh, old school IC such as the CV4046 uh, with its um, with its made already been made voltage controlled oscillator, you get a pretty precise signal. I tried with a crystal resonator circuit and you know I tried to make a Culpitz oscillator. It just didn't work out. Um, and you know, frankly, I'm not in the mood to deal with crystals. If I could have um, uh, a simple I plug and play IC with an adjustable uh, calibratable potentiometer attached to it that I can uh, have um, generating an exactly uh, an exact uh, frequency signal that I want. So with the 555 timer, I can't get it to go up that high uh, to 800 kilohertz. I could get it to go to maybe 600 kilohertz max. And as in my previous short video, it did work um, to light up the LEDs, but it's not a reliable, controllable signal. So we're going to go with this um, going forward. Thanks for watching.